Our next guest is Susan Smitten. She is an award-winning filmmaker and writer whose recent projects communicate the connection between environmental issues and First Nations stewardship of the land, and not to mention you're the author of seven books. Oh my gosh. If that isn't enough, she's the executive director of Raven, respecting Aboriginal values and environmental needs. Raven is a Victoria-based nonprofit charitable organization that provides financial resources to assist Aboriginal nations within Canada in lawfully forcing industrial development to be reconciled with their traditional ways of life and in a manner that addresses global warming and other ecological sustainable issues. Since 2009, Susan, you have created and managed the only nonprofit corporate charity in Canada with a mission to raise legal defense funds to assist First Nations to enforce their rights and title to protect their traditional territories and the environment. Let's welcome Susan again. She's just, everybody loves Susan. <laughs> Thank you very much. Could you please share a bit about the work you do alongside Indigenous people addressing and shifting barriers? Sure. Um, well, our, uh, our theory of change is actually fairly simple. It's that Indigenous peoples in Canada, uh, we think, hold the balance of power in terms of protecting the environment. They uh, have pretty much the strongest rights now with respect to the environment because those rights are enshrined in the Constitution. And if they can afford to enforce them, they can have a major impact on protecting their lands and uh, the lands that we all want to share with them. Um, the, that keep sentences if they can afford to enforce them. Um, they're up against the deep pockets often of government and corporations. So we exist to help um, make it possible for them to be able to see court cases through to the end. And then also by shifting the burden of uh, fundraising essentially for this, it, it's shared by all of us who benefit from the outcome. That's a win-win if I've ever heard one. <laughs> Can you share an example of a, a recent successful campaign? Well, we've had quite a few, but, oh, I know, you're <laughs> full of but one of the best oh. ones that we had and uh, uh, is Pull Together, which we created with Sierra Club BC for the first one and uh, is still going for Kinder Morgan. But um, Pull Together was, um, it was really for us a real transition to a collaborative, uh, they're all indigenous led, but collaborative and grassroots fed campaign. So um, it also transformed tra uh, traditional funding models. Um, so we basically went to the seven nations uh, who were litigating against Enbridge and we said, would you be willing to work together? Um, because we can't just have little individual campaigns. That's just way too hard. And, and so we, we used their narratives, their images, um, and, and their financial needs to create the campaign nexus. Then we created a standalone website, poll-together.ca, rather than using Raven's website, because um, by having an open source uh, website, other NGOs, allies, felt totally comfortable sharing it. It didn't inhibit other people from spreading the word. And then this was the biggest shift. We used a brand new platform at the time for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, so we combined the compelling stories of the nations with the energy of everyone it started um, Caitlin likes to tell the story how it started with spaghetti dinner and terrace and mm -hmm. and just went outward from there so that fundraising and uh, for this campaign could be both fun but also effective and our tagline was who knew it could be so much fun stopping a pipeline lots of people might remember that so the other and then this was this is the game changer though the key component that funders tell us is that by creating this um, open source and, and um, combined effort, donors didn't have to choose. So we had a major donor who came in with $250,000 in matching funds, which of course every donor likes to hear that. And so it meant that we removed the politics, we've all focused on the united goal of supporting indigenous-led litigation ultimately to stop an unwanted project. 
Oh, congratulations. And it worked. Oh, yeah, did it ever. <laughs> and how was this transformative for the nations? Well, the feedback we got from the nations was that they felt that their voices were heard. They felt that um, they were part of a movement. They weren't in this alone anymore. Um, the Health Sick Nation uh, told us, you know, it's really lonely up here in Bella Bella when you feel like you're all by yourself. So they were, also, they were a community of nations, but they were also working with their surrounding communities. Um, they didn't have to divert money from other uh, essential issues like housing, education, and they felt fully represented in court. So their lawyers didn't have to scrimp, they could actually um, fully represent them to the successful conclusion. Oh, that's fantastic. And talking about the transformative power of directed networks and collaborations, how is being involved with Creatively United benefited oh, right? We love these guys. <laughs> we love you. Uh, we were part of the planning for the very, very first Creatively United event. But for us, it's been, um, I mean, Francis's energy has always been inspiring. Honestly, it's true. And the idea of leveraging networks for um, the greater good, which is really what Pulled Together was, was a key thing. Um, and then uh, we got some of our best volunteers from some of your events who are still some of our key volunteers and also um, just generally having a better presence. We're a national charity, but uh, we now have a real base here in Victoria, which is great. Oh, thank you, Susan, so much. You're such an inspiration and all the best to you and your team at Raven. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>